KTRS. Tony Messenger joins us on the Big 550 KTRS. Tony Messenger, good morning this morning. Good morning, McGraw. Good morning, Kelly. How's good morning, Tony. Doing? We are uh, surviving here one week before Thanksgiving. Well, what's on your mind these days? Well, you know, I wrote a column uh, this week, the third that I've written in a series on the situation the city had where uh, its shot spotter technology got turned off. And this is the technology that a lot of people in the city uh, rely on it. it. It records gunshots in real time and can direct police officers directly to a very specific scene where the gunfire happens so that they can find crime if it's taking place, so that they can find victims. Uh, and then it also records the data and they can use that data to make comparisons year over year and try to figure out, you know, which areas are increasing in gunfire. It's a technology the residents in the areas have really come to depend on because people don't call 911 in some of those areas like they used to. Um, they hear gunfire all the time, so they don't call 911 every time that it happens. And, and ShotSpotter, in, in some cases, replaces 911 and is better than 911 in terms of its accuracy. Well, the program got turned off uh, for about three to four months earlier this year between July and October. Um, basically because the bill didn't get paid. And there was a, there was a dispute between the city, uh, between the mayor's office, the budget office, and uh, the police chief, Sam Dotson, over uh, where the money should come from. And what I discovered this week is that even though there was a budget dispute over where the money should come from, there was no reason for it to be turned off. Uh, ShotSpotter had sent an email to the police department saying, hey, look, we understand budget situations. This stuff happens all over the country. If you call us and tell us you're working on a solution, we'll leave the program on. Well, nobody did that. And so the program was turned off for four months, and police officers were upset about it. Residents were upset about it. Um, so that's what my column was about this week. It is uh, uh, my Wednesday column. It is back online it's been online since i first wrote about it on october 28th it's working again uh but it's clear that there is some uh communication and political problems going on a little bit between the police department and the mayor's office and i suspect sam dodson's brief flirtation with uh a run for mayor had something to do with those issues this is you know this is an interesting story uh tony because I don't live in a place where I hear gunshots and the first thing I think is, hmm, let me go to my app and see where the gunshots are coming from, right? I just don't live in that world. So this yep. is a classic yep. example of two different Americas. Um, and, and, and I know, talking to some people who live down there, that that's what they do. You don't call the police every time you hear a gunshot because the police would just be living in that that neighborhood, if you will. Um, well, and part of, part of it is... I. I, I was talking to uh, Alderman Kara Spencer about this, and she lives in a neighborhood in which there is a lot of gunfire, and she's actually the one who sent an email to the police department to ask them about some shot spotter data, and that helped uncover uh, the fact that, that the program had been turned off. And, you know, she made an interesting point to me. She says, when you hear gunfire in her neighborhood, you don't run to the window and look so that you can identify where it is because you don't know if it's right outside your window and you don't want, you know, to put yourself in danger. So the, the shot spotter technology that has these microphones that are placed in neighborhoods in, in key neighborhoods that tend to be high crime neighborhoods. Um, it's much more accurate than a nine one one call anyway, because if you do call nine one one, you're hunkered down somewhere in your, you know, your kitchen or your bedroom and, you're just, you know, sort of telling the police, hey, here's where I live, and I heard some gunfire. I think maybe it was south of me. Um, the the, gun, the shot spotter technology is much more accurate than that. It sounds like the police use it. So if you call and say, hey, there was a gunshot, they say, let me check spot shotter and see what happens. Uh, yeah, and the interesting thing about the police using it is in, in my first column on the technology uh, being turned off, I uh, quoted a police officer, Heather Taylor, who is the president of the Ethical Society of Police, 
who confirmed to me that, yes, police use it, and yes, it's been turned off, and she's heard from officers that how come we're not getting shot spotter calls. She is now facing disciplinary action from the police department for talking to me and confirming uh, that the technology was turned off for a period of time. Tony, are you so? Uh, um, clear this up for me a little bit. Is it? Do you, do you think there are people trying to embarrass Sam Donson on his run for the mayor's race? Do you think there was some type of uh, war going on between the police department and the mayor's office? What What are you insinuating here? Well, I think that there is no doubt that in, in the emails that I looked at back and forth, I filed an open records request from the mayor's office and, and, and got the communication that sort of explained what ultimately happened here. I think it's clear to me that there may have been some politics being played um, in terms of where the money was going to, which pot of money was the money going to come from. Um, and that might have led to the program being turned off for a period of time. The problem is it's just plain um, incompetence that the program got turned off because the letter from ShotSpotter makes it very clear that they're used to dealing with budget situations all over the country. Give us a call. We'll, we'll keep it on. Just tell us that you want it and you're going to find us the money. And, they, and the city didn't do that. Mm -hmm. Tony Messenger, good job as always. Thanks for coming in. Pouring more, getting more trouble, getting more people in trouble every time you, you talk to somebody, Tony. That's what I, that's what I live for. Uh, have a good week, Tony. Thanks for checking in. Tony Messenger, Post-Dispatch columnist and uh, contributor every Tuesday and Thursday here on the Big 550 KTRS. It's 824. We'll talk numbers. We'll